how you doing today? We're at the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I have no idea what to expect, but I thought it looked pretty cool, and I hope you'll come along. Okay, I was telling her that I was at the car museum and it was really awesome, and she said they have the OJ Simpson Bronco chase car here. Oh my gosh. So we're going in. This is a picture of Alcatraz. Isn't that amazing? Okay, we're going on up. Drunkenness was my crime. For that, I, Daniel Scott, suffered the pain of having my nostrils slit. These are, you can put your face through there. Bell Star, Billy the Kid. Sitting bull and take your picture. We've got a shooting gallery. You gotta pay to do it. This is a machine gun. Was used in the filming of the 1983 movie Scarface. Okay. Used by Al Pacino. That's pretty cool. Okay, these are match books from the short time when Bugsy Siegel ran the Flamingo. Wow, 1946. Isn't that something? These are melted nickels from the El Rancho Casino in Vegas. This is a revolver from The Godfather. And this is also a pistol from The Godfather. Movie, 1972. Things you have ever wondered about the mob. It's like Frank Sinatra and did the mob kill JFK? I think so. Oh, look at these. Some of the mobsters. There's Lucky Luciano, John Gotti. That's really all I recognize. Oh, here's some John Gotti. And this is one of his suits. Oh, no, no, excuse me. This originally from Brooklyn, New York, Mickey Cohen from one of the most powerful West Coast mob bosses under Bugsy Siegel. This was his suit. Here's John Gotti. They called him the Teflon Don because he kept getting away. Now these are some artifacts from Bernie Madoff. This is a note from him. Bernie Madoff's surviving son Andrew has not spoken to his father since the day of Madoff's confession in 2008. The letter was sent by Madoff from prison in North Carolina. It says, Dear Andy, happy birthday. Love, Dad. I'm sure you all know who Madoff was. The master key opened all the doors at the BLMIS offices in the Lipstick Building. Only five people had this key. That's where I, I think he did all his dealings. Bernie Madoff Monster. This room is all about serial killers. I see John Wayne Gacy. There are a ton of people in here. I'm going to keep moving y'all. Famous murderers, Susan Smith, Lizzie Borden, Charles Manson's guitar. Oh, yeah. Wow. <sighs> Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses. Oh my goodness. Wow. It's him wearing them and that's them right there. Sharon Tate, bless her heart. Presidential assassinations. Oh, anthrax attack. This was the 
Oh my gosh, this is the note that was aimed directly and was sent to Tom Brokaw. This is talking about the 2013 Boston Marathon. This was a this medal was worn by worn by the family members and support teams of the runners. Now this looks like the Oklahoma City bombing. Can y'all see it? Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, the Unabomber. And these are some of his artifacts. Wow. This is about 9-11, and they're watching a the movie, so I'm going to be quiet, but I want to show you part of the building right here. Okay, this is Marilyn Monroe's dress. It says... Long speculated, but never confirmed, John Kennedy and Hollywood starlet Marilyn Monroe were believed to be romantically entangled during the presidency. The sequin wiggle dress displayed here was acquired by Marilyn in 1960 and worn publicly several times before her death in 1962. And this was her ticket to the ball where she sang. Happy birthday to him. Oh my gosh. This is the bullet that was shot from Jack Ruby's gun that shot Oswald in 1963. Wow. It said 100 shots were fired from the gun that day from Ruby by Ruby's brother Earl. This is the suit. Okay, John Wayne Gacy's trial suit. Serial killer John Wayne Gacy was ordered to stand trial for murders of three, 33 young men and boys following his arrest in late 1978. At the time, it was the largest murder charges brought against any single person in the United States. During the trial, Gacy's defense team presented the idea that Gacy was legally insane at the time of the murders, but in the end, the jury rejected the claim of insanity and Gacy was found guilty of all 33 murders. This was a suit he had on. These were the items found in his pocket. Wow. This is a picture of him. He used to entertain kids as a clown. This section is more about Alcatraz and the cells and what they look like. Ooh. Cat of nine tails. They used to beat people with that. A breast ripper. Oh my gosh. Boy. Beheading. This is how this item they beheaded people. That's a stock. Put your head in there. Oh, this is an electric chair. They're calling it an old smoky Tennessee electric chair. Wow. Okay, this is Ted Bundy's car. It's his 1968 Volkswagen. It says there are two Volkswagen Beetles associated with the Bundy murders. The one he owned in Utah and the one stolen in Florida. This is the car that Bundy owned and was the integral part in both of his murders and conviction when it yielded important DNA evidence. Wow. That's amazing. Now, I don't know if that is the real Bonnie and Clyde car. Let's see what it says. Okay, this was the car that was used in the movie. Um, Bonnie and Clyde death car, 1967. 
It's a 1934 Ford V8. I'm trying to see. I think it was Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty. But this was the actual car they used in the movie. Now this, John Dillinger's 1933 Essex Terraplane. So John Dillinger was already a household name by the time he purchased this car. New from... Hothoff Brothers Motor Company in St. Paul in March 1934. This was his car. John Dellinger. Wow. Now, this is unbelievable. This is the O.J. Simpson chase car. It's a 1993 Ford Bronco. On June 17, 1994, the news interrupted, and I remember watching it, the NBA Finals to show a slow speed police chase of a white Bronco on an empty California highway. In the back seat was former NFL star O.J. Simpson with a gun to his head threatening to kill himself. My goodness, isn't that amazing? And there's a picture of the chase. Y'all probably remember that. That's something. There's his license plate. Now these are the boots of the sheriff that killed Bonnie and Clyde. Something. Okay, this pistol was used by Kevin Costner in the role of Elliot Ness in the popular film from 1987, The Untouchables. Well, did you guys think it was worth the $24 that I spent? I think it's $27. A regular adult ticket but she asked me if I was a senior and I said yes so I got it for, for cheaper but I thought it was pretty cool I love seeing those cars that was kind of my favorite part and then some of the articles of um, serial killers and different things like that but y'all let me know if you liked it I think it's worth coming if you like crime there was a, a ton more I didn't look at they they went into fingerprinting and blood analysis and DNA and all these things but I just didn't stop and look at all that so I hope you enjoyed it. Until I see you again, have a blessed day. Bye.